Good morning. This is the first Sunday of Advent and the day that our Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have the Paschal candle lit, lit today because we are celebrating a baptism of Ginger Rothschild today in between services. Welcome Ginger into the family of God. We have new things. It is a new year for the church. And so we have a new way of presenting our, our service today. It is very, uh, I hope, intimate for you to understand how important you are to God's world with your own light. And so that is the, the, the theme of reflecting the sacred. I hope you saw that as you came in. Um, so as we prepare today, I'd like you to witness some of the people that I have invited to um, light the candles today. We are gathered. Please stand. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God to share God's light in the world. As we begin this Advent season, The Advent wreath of four candles will be preparing us for the week of the coming of the Lord, the light of the world. We invite you to bring a lighted candle forward as we reflect on this sacred time of eternal hope. Every Sunday you will find the candles in the back pew that you're welcome to bring to your pew and carry forward and to light here to see the reflection. We celebrate the light of Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, the Holy Sacred Eternal. In the beginning, the Word incarnate was made flesh, fully human, living among us. Morning light into darkness, and that light blazed out of the darkness, becoming our Redeemer, our Savior. His name is Jesus. Today, we light the candle of hope. We pray for God's hope this day. We pray to see the sacred reflected in all things. We pray for our hearts to be open, to see each moment as a gift of Christ's presence. This is the gift of the Christ mystery, lighting the way to hope in the world. Upon this moment, upon this people, upon this place, the holy comes, and sacred knowing brings sacred being for sacred doing of God's promises. As we take in this hope of God, we offer you to be the reflection into the world. And we open our service today with this beautiful song, Go Light Your World. Please follow along.
God is with us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. We sing from the, the Pew worship song called Confession. In our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been forgiven, washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. We continue where it says, Congregation, on your page. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. 
Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Isaiah chapter 2. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall, shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords in plowshares, and their spears in pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 122, and this psalm will be read responsively. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within our gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. For the sake of my kindred and companions, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. A reading from Romans chapter 13. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the movement for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in revealing and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I invite the children up for a children's sermon and anybody who wants to consider themselves a child. <laughs> Well, good. <laughs> Thanks for coming up. If you haven't picked up, this is all new. Advent is a new season in the church year, and it's all about light. And so we thought, how wonderful to try some new songs and to really focus. You know, when you're learning something new, you have to really focus. You have to really pay attention because it's not like that comfortable part of it. So we will be doing the same opening every Advent Sunday and even on Christmas Eve. So uh, I invite all of them to come up and light a candle just the way it did. And isn't it pretty how the light is reflecting off of the earth? Well, we are talking about the sacred light, the sacred time for reflection. What does it mean to reflect? Yeah, to like show what you know. And uh, so I brought along, I love reflections. Uh, I brought this one because I think that's pretty cool, or cool, isn't it? I had to take it away from all my grandkids yesterday and kept saying, this is my children's sermon. <laughs> so it is reflecting a lot of different colors. 
you know, colors are kind of the moods of Christmas as well. Um, and we go through all those emotions as we're getting ready for Christmas. So it's kind of nice to have a lot of different ideas of how things can reflect in those moods. And our focus is always on the cross. Now, I have a little bit of, a, do you see anything in there? Now, it's just a little reflection. It's kind of blue, but Audrey, Aubrey, can you hold that up to one of those candles and see if it lights up and reflects a little bit more? Oh, yep, you see some light coming through there. Now, I have one more in here, and I thought this was really cool, if I can get it. It's got different kinds of glass. I might have worn it out. Okay, you hold that and show how maybe will it shine up on anything to get a different light here? It might be too far up there. But a lot of different reflections. Now, we have, a, I think it was somebody in your family that gave me this beautiful reflection. In this season, we are reflecting Christ. This is Mary and Joseph walking to Bethlehem. And then you have this little prism, and when you hold it up to light, will you hold that up to a light over there and see maybe uh, one of these Christmas lights here? Do you see how that light just goes out into the world and makes a difference? And then, because you came up, I'm giving your own uh, reflection here. If I can separate them, you might just get a whole bunch of them, Dave. And then you can hang them on your tree, and every time you walk by, you can remember that's what we're supposed to do is reflect God's light. That's what Jesus is saying in our gospel lesson today. We get all worried that he's talking about the end of the world. And Jesus is saying, you know it's going to be okay because you know me. And when you're reflecting Christ's light every day of your life, there are no worries. Nobody knows what time exactly the end of the world, the day of the, of the Son of Man is coming. You don't have to worry about that because you're always with Christ. And reflecting that light reminds us that. So that is the beautiful lesson of, of, of Christ. He's always with us. That's why we sang Emmanuel. That's why we say, go light your world. And that's why when we are going to proclaim the gospel lesson today, we're going to sing, thy word is a lamp upon, uh, upon my feet and a light unto my path. You know, because we have to remember that's why we're, we're shining God's light for others to see. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, Thank you for coming to this world. Thank you for coming to this world. Living among us. So that we may shine your light. So that we may shine your light. Through our lives. Through our lives. So all may know you. So all may know you. Amen. Amen. So go shine your light into the world. Thanks for coming up. And all of us were going to sing thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And that is the gospel acclamation. Please stand. singing thy word is a lamp unto my feet and thank you you did a really good job on something new the holy gospel according to saint matthew the 24th chapter verses 36 through 44. jesus said to the disciples about that day and hour no one knows neither the angels of heaven nor the son but only the father for as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving, given in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. 
But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have left his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <laughs>
hope, joy, and love to you from our God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I walked over here, I'm thinking, oh, wow. It seems like it's been a long time since Tuesday of being in this sanctuary and decorating and dreaming about what this morning would look like and to work out all of the kinks of something new. But then I was thinking of all the joy, and especially for all who was here, when we saw uh, our choir director fall off the ladder on Tuesday and land here, and what is what life is all about. And we are so thankful to have sung this morning with you and to give praise that uh, a few stitches and a lot of prayers um, joined us together this morning. And in all that decorations, you know, the presence of God was so very, very evident. We knew that God was here in all of the things of all the joy and then of all of the fear that something might have happened terrible. There's always hope. We knew that God was always going to be here to take care of us. And that is the beautiful message of Advent, of peace, love, joy, and hope. And that was not exactly how I was going to start my sermon, because it just came to me that we need to thank God for the moment. You know, that is the theme of my sermon, the sacred time. And it was the right sacred time to say this. And now I'm going to start my sermon the way I wanted to start the sermon. So get ready, because I'm taking you on a journey. Are you awake and alive and alert? Yes. All right, here we go. It's excitement, anticipation, and preparation. It was getting ready for our family vacation when I was about four years old. At the new year, my parents would always say, this year, and it was always in July, because we were farmers, um, it would be a week that we were going to go see something great. Now, I tell my children, and I tried to take my children on these kinds of vacations, and they didn't appreciate them nearly like I did when my parents took them. But it was always something historical, to see a statue of something, and to learn the entire history of it all. We would prepare. My mom would sit us down, and she would tell us stories over and over in every detail of what we were going to experience. We would lay out our suitcases plenty in time to make sure that we had everything packed. And then my mom would get out a map, and she would show us exactly how we were going to travel. She would bring on first aid kits, thinking of everything that might happen Anything else that we might need, you know, uh, any car repairs that you could stick in the car. We were ready to go. And as a child, all I had to do was make sure I got my suitcase in the car. And I was the youngest of the three sisters, so I always got the middle seat. And so I was squeezed in there and, you know, we'd start out on the road all excited. You know how life is, you, you start out excited. And, and then my parents would always make us sing in the car. I don't know if any of you experienced that, but we were a singing family. So we would sing every song that my mom and dad knew. And then, you know, we were traveling. And that lull of the tires and the rhythm of the road, oh my gosh, you got so sleepy. And I would fall asleep. And then I would hear this, wake up, <laughs> you're missing it. And I would wake up and I'd look around and I would say, where are we? Because uh, I'm looking out the window. There was nothing out there to look at except fields. And it was just plain grayness out there. And my mom would say, this is the journey. You're in the car right now. This is what you are to be looking at. And we would start playing zip or my father owns the grocery store or to look at every sign and, and read the alphabet through. Don't miss it. She said, yes, we are going to the landmarks. But the time, the sacred time is now. We are together in this car, and we are on vacation. When I thought about how to describe Advent to you, I want to take you on my family vacation. I want you to experience ex exactly what, what God has prepared for us. Get your suitcases packed, whatever you need, so you know that you have the necessities. Look at the map where you're headed from the manger 
to the baptismal font, to the holy sacrament table, to the cross, to the empty tomb. This is the journey you are on. It is the greatest journey, and we started out all together. And we can sing and praise to you today because you sang a lot of new songs and you're going to go home and say, what was that we did in church today? And you're going to say, I can't wait to come back until next Sunday and do it all over again and we'll get better. And by the end of December, you'll know these songs and you'll be singing them in the car rides on the way home. That's my hope. And then you're going to be able to tell your children about that, to tell your neighbors about that that this is the place to be, preparing, anticipating, hoping for this wonderful trip, the journey of eternal hope. Everyone is welcome. God came here among us through his son, Jesus Christ, to live, to die for you, to raise from the cross, from the dead, so that you could live forever and ever. It is the greatest destination of your life. It's that sacred time that we do right now, though. Because if you read in the scriptures as we prepare for Christmas, it's all about people worrying about how to do this life here on earth and what will really happen when the eternal life happens. And Jesus is saying, you know, I don't know the time, only the Father. That has been very studied over and over, and it's a verse in, in Matthew that you can read all week and just ponder. Jesus doesn't know the hour when the Son of Man is coming. And he compares it to Noah. He's telling these people, well, you know about Noah. And I would say that's a really good story because I think the whole world knows about Noah. If you walk through Hobby Lobby, if you walk through a lot of stories, you see Noah's Ark very well advertised. And Jesus knew the people he was talking to understood Noah. And what he was saying about the people in Noah's time was they knew of God. And they would really go for those big days. You know, the days you get married, the days that are landmarks in your life. He goes, but Noah knew the journey. Noah knew who God was. Noah lived knowing God was right there with him all the time. Emmanuel with us. And so Noah did what all the rest of the people thought was crazy. He followed what God told him. He listened to him. He built an ark. He goes, that's what the difference is about people that fear the end of times, always trying to predict and worrying about, will I be taken, will I be left behind? You know, we've had tons of movies, the Left Behind series, the raptures, and all of this other stuff. And Jesus says, don't worry about it. If you know Christ, you know the end of the story. Billy Graham said that. It's okay. I know the end of the story. It's going to be okay. Instead, live your life for right now, doing what God has called you to do. Reflect the light. Just reflect the light. Reflect the love of the world. St. Augustine said this. He was a big theologian, one of the first. He said, pray today as though everything depends on God, but work today as though everything depends on you. That's how you live your life. In this Advent series, in this Advent of sacred time reflection, everything depends on God. Pray hard, but work as if everything depends on you so that others know. When I was in that car ride, I look back and I ponder. That word ponder is really big in Advent. Just to think back, why did I love family's vacation so much as a child? It's because I didn't have to do anything but listen to my parents. They took care of me. As long as I listened and did what they told me to do, I was safe. I knew everything was gonna be fine. 
That's God's message to us. You, I, we are God's children. God's going to take care of us. Just knowing that, the journey is okay. When my parents said, get out of the car and look around, I got out of the car and looked around. And when God takes you to a moment, get out and look around and see what he's called you to do. It is in those ordinary times that I remember of the vacation. It's not the landmarks. It's those times when you just took time to laugh, to experience the ordinary part of life, and to see love in each other. That is what the journey is about. Now, I could spend all my time reflecting on the past or worrying about the future. But I love this quote. Yesterday's the past, tomorrow's the future, today is the present. It's the gift. God calls you to live it today, this sacred time, to take this light out into the world, knowing that God has got everything in control all we have to do is listen and look for him. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God of all, your children everywhere cry out for mercy. Awaken the global church to the urgent needs of our time. Break down barriers of culture and custom and unite people of all faiths in your redemp redemptive and healing work. God of wonder, the earth's beauty and abundance is your gift. Teach us your ways of sharing resources and caring for life. Guard fragile habitat, habitats, preserve the wild places, and protect endangered plants and animals. God of peace, you judge the nations. Beat our weapons into tools for serving the neighbor. Strengthen the resolve of all who work for an end to war. We pray for lasting peace in the land of Jesus' birth. God of loving kindness, you desire fullness of life for everyone. Fill those who hunger, comfort the grieving, and attend to those near death. Bring help and hope to any who are sick or needing your care, especially Sean McDivitt, Patty Garrett, Connie Smith, Marge Bodenot, Mike Cauley, Heidi Walton, Ruth Lady Pollock, Carol May, Bob Norris, Christina Oaks, Marion Smith, Laura Lady, Juanita Young, Roger Miller, Keith Young, and Kim Bartishraw. God of community, you are present when we gather in your name. Guide congregations and transitions or conflict. Give wisdom to congregational councils, call committees, and ministry leaders. Keep us alert to unexpected opportunities for mission. God of promise, your goodness is everlasting. We give thanks for the lives of the faithful who now rest in you. We trust that you will bring us into the company of all the saints with rejoicing. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with you. Share the peace of the Lord.
today as the plates come forward. with me for I was hungry and you gave me food I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink I was a stranger and you welcomed me amen the Lord be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord let us give thanks to our, the Lord our God it is right to give our thanks and praise it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. indeed holy almighty and merciful God you are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory you so loved the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life we give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his solitary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promises of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with the heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church now and forever. Amen, 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 amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet. God feeds us with the presence of Jesus Christ. Be strong. Do not fear. Here is your God, who has come to save you.
please stand and where you feel comfortable, please hold the person's hand next to you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep your hearts and minds in his grace. Amen. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <clears throat> A few announcements before we end today's service. Welcome, ladies, your reservations are needed. Uh, please plan on coming to the wonderful Christmas party on December 5th. Call the office to make reservations. Points out of forms are available for you to fill out and have those ready by December 9th. Again, you can call the church office or stop in. Uh, outside the church office, we have Advent devotions available for you to take home today. Make sure that you get one of those. It takes you through all the days till Christmas. We have Advent calendars. And last Sunday on our first Mission Sunday in our Sunday school, they created a snack mix uh, that tells the Christmas story. So you'll be receiving those gifts as you leave today. Hear this beautiful blessing. God, the eternal word, who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. People of good hope, we are grounded in faith, gathered in love, and sent with the purpose so that others may gain the kingdom. And we sing, Prophets told us. Go in peace, Christ is near. Go light your world. Thanks be to God.